welcome to It's Upgrade Season, the only place to get raw and unfiltered advice on how to get your shit together one week at a time. I'm your host, Alexandria, and join me every Monday for the upgrade and every Friday for the wind down where I'm going to be answering your dilemmas. Small shifts, huge upgrades. Let's fucking do this. This oh my whole, god you're, yes. this is amazing Thanks. I feel like Such we're all very on brand so on brand like, so good so on brand <laughs> you're like very elegant Mel's got all this feminine you look like a mermaid right now in the best Thank kind you. of way and I've just come as absolute pink pink Met Gala I'm gonna go for yeah I love it <laughs> thanks guys so here for upgrade season baby it's upgrade season so welcome thank, thank you, you for joining me um I'm gonna start with the question that I've been asked so many times have we created a cult do we all live together in a cult? I think the fact that when we all came here tonight, we said, oh my God, the whole cult is here, <laughs> leads me to believe that yes, we are indeed in a cult. No, the best was Bri went, we've left. <laughs> it was like the escape energy. Okay, I'm kind of joking about the cult, but I do think we have a really unusual setup as friends in that we all live around the corner from each other. We have the village. So Natalie, I feel like you were one of the one of the key recruiters into this. I'll take it. Talk to me about the vision. Was this purposeful? Was this intention tension led? Like Okay, so it all began mm -hmm. on my twenty eighth birthday. Mm-hmm in LA when Alexi Panos, who's been on my podcast so many times, she came to my house for my birthday and she was like, we just put a deposit down on some land in Austin. And me being me, I was like, I want to do that too. So I put this deposit down without even telling Steven. And I didn't think we were going to end up moving to Austin. I was like, this would be a great investment. Sounds like a good investment. And then COVID happened. We were like, we're ready to leave. So I was like, well, great news. We're building a house anyway. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> so that is literally when it happened that organically. And then we started chatting and you decided you were going to move to the same neighborhood. And then, well, actually, how did that happen? We knew that we were moving to Austin, but I told Natalie, we're, gonna, we're looking for houses in Austin. And she says, there's a house around the corner from me that's up right now. Why didn't I go view it for you? Do you remember? Yeah, but I don't think I like knew it was up. I think I actually like looked to see if there was any and found one in there. Yeah, you it. found it in a Facebook group. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was yeah. like, I, I don't just know about it. I'm yeah. like, okay, she gets to live right beside me. So then I was like, I I'll know. happily go view it. <laughs> this is like I the, the equivalent of I was in the area. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but I wasn't, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that I was being recruited into a cult though. I just thought Natalie's found this great house that's in Austin and she's going to go view it for us and it looks great. And I trust her. And if she says she would take it, then I would take it. So but hang on, had you not actually viewed your house when you no, signed the lease? Natalie just me. had. I love this. <laughs> that is levels of friendship trust. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You oh. didn't even ask for videos. No, what? You FaceTimed us, didn't you? Didn't you FaceTime us from... Oh, did place? I? I think so. I don't remember it even being much of an involved process. I remember you being like, oh, cool. I just remember you saying, I would take this if it was me. Yeah. And I was like, that's all I need. <laughs> true, true. I like this. I yeah. like this. So we were living together in Miami at the time. Yes. And then you found out you were having Sky. Yes. And your now husband mm -hmm. wasn't living in Miami. Mm -hmm. So you left me. You left me to go to Austin. Well, I think I knew that it would only be a matter of time before you also got pregnant and moved to Austin. True. <laughs> Did you already feel that? Because I feel like you had no idea you were going to get pregnant, right? No. So my plan wasn't to get pregnant for like another year. She manifested this whole thing. Oh my God. Literally. Like, I, I mean, <laughs> we've been together all over the world. So yeah. when I was like, we're moving to Austin, I didn't feel like I'm leaving you. I was just like, this is the next chapter by the way. <laughs> she was just leading the way. Yeah. She was like, I'll go, give it a bit of time, you'll follow. I never felt, I never felt like it was goodbye. Okay, that's good. I mean, like I, I just knew. Because it wasn't, because I came. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I had a similar thing in that me and Jake then found a house in Austin and we were like, we found this house in Austin. At this point I'm pregnant. I, did, I didn't plan on getting pregnant. That's the whole other story, it's in episode one. Um, but we were like, we're coming to Austin. We found this house and we sent you the house and you were like, you were so diplomatic about it. I can't remember how you phrased it, but you're like, I love that for you guys. And it's a bit far away. <laughs> it was like a 20 minute drive by the way. Oh, way too far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you, and you were right. You were like with a baby, you're not gonna wanna get in the car and like. Mm -mm. That is true. Yeah, mm -mm. it's a faff. 
So this is how it came to be. I was like, we're gonna look for houses in the neighborhood that are within walking distance and we're gonna view them for you. How does that sound? Yeah, and <laughs> we're literally two doors away. Making so. that irresistible offer. Yeah. Wait, yeah. but there we, talk, we should talk about the next step. Oh yeah, so we, we've just built a house. Do you wanna, like, who's gonna, who's gonna announce you this? You share it. We've just built houses next to each other. The next so door, we, next, next door. Next, we share a fence. We fully share a fence. We're not so, codependent. What are you talking about? <laughs> so we've got like a month. No, but the best thing was we walked with Natalie and Stephen the other day and we were like, oh, great. We're actually even closer walk to you guys now. <laughs> so we're all getting closer. It's great. Yeah. I feel like stroller walks are just way better than car journeys, mm -hmm. you know? Particularly when your son hates the car seat. It's funny because when I grew up, like I grew up in that kind of environment, I'm sure you guys did too, where you just played outside with your friends and you would walk in and out of neighbors' houses. And then I remember being old enough to move out and think, why would you live somewhere like this? Why not live in the city? It's way more fun. Mm -hmm. And then you have babies and you're like, oh no, yeah, they had it right all along. Yeah. I get it. Like our parents mm -hmm. really did get more right than we like to think. <laughs> oh my Sean God. and I walk all the time and we're like, this place, our neighborhood, Let's our cook neighborhood that is amazing. <laughs> and, um, and also like if we were in our 20s, this mm -hmm. would have been our worst nightmare. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 20 year old me is dying on the inside. Yeah. I thought suburbia was where dreams went to die. Yeah. And now I'm like, I am loving my life. Yes. This is so great. You we make like another pancakes mom on the weekend. Walk down the street with a baby and the yeah. dog. You're like, Thank you. Yeah. It's great. It's Do you know great. what though? If anyone in their mid twenties, like living their life, is listening to this, would be yeah. like, they don't know anything about life, do they? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like okay. I'm not in. I'm not on TikTok. I talk about this a lot. I know I should be, but I'm just not cool enough for that. Um, but like, I feel like they're all into like wholesome vibes, soft girl era. Are they? Yeah, I think we're in. Yeah. I could see Gen Z as being into commune vibe. Yeah. Okay. I so like this living off. I think. The land. I think post pandemic, everyone's like. When are we all moving in together and building, like, you know, buying land together and living off the land? Like, I feel like we're not quite there, but I feel like that is in the atmosphere since COVID. I feel like it is now, but I feel like just post COVID, I had like a rebound fling with life. And I was like, I want to go to all the restaurants. I want to eat all the foods and do all the things. And now yeah. I'm like, oh no, it was quite fun staying home sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I love an 8 p.m. bedtime. Um, okay, but in all seriousness, we do have this really beautiful community that we've built together. We're friends, we're there for each other. What difference do you feel like it's made to both your lives and poten potentially through the lens of motherhood as well, being in the village? I mean, for me, I feel like it's made the world of difference. To have friends on your doorstep is incredible. I mean, we call it the bat signal. When something goes wrong, when we need mm -hmm. someone, you just put it in the group and within seconds, it, everyone descends on your doorstep and, and we're there for each other and we actually spend time. And it's really nice being able to do that without a big hurrah of getting everyone in the car and going out and being at brunch spots and all those things. It feels really, really supportive. Mm -hmm. And I, I also personally, just in the season of life that I'm in, love getting to hang out with friends without needing to make plans. Mm. I love just like, can we go for a walk today? Can we do a play date today? Like, can we do something that feels really fun in this seasons of life? And we're all, we've all got a lot going on. We're all juggling so many things. And I think that feels really supportive. Mm. And then beyond that, you know, I think being a, an entrepreneurial mother and an ambitious mother comes with so many of its own challenges to have a community I mean, bonus points that we all live closely together, but to have a community of of all of us that are doing that mm. is so invaluable. And definitely we have probably weekly breakdowns, but it, to, to be able to do that in a community with that level of support, I feel incredibly lucky. And for anyone listening who doesn't have that and does plan on you know, venturing into the amazing world of entrepreneurial motherhood, I think looking to create that kind of community would be one of the best things you could do for yourself, for your mental health, for all of it. Or I'm just going to say it could join CEO Mama. <laughs> Let's drop that plug. Oh, I'll plug that one. <laughs> I mean, yeah, everything that Natalie said. I remember being pregnant and seeing like motherhood online and so many moms share how lonely it is and how isolating it can feel. And I was just really clear when I was pregnant, that is not gonna be my experience. I wanna be surrounded by mothers. I wanna be in community because community is the new currency. It's like everything to our health. And you know, studies are showing that people who live in community actually live longer, healthier lives. And so especially in motherhood, like new motherhood, where everything is brand new, you feel like you've been reborn again and everything feels like it's 
crumbling and changing and evolving, like to be with women who are on that same path um, at the same time is invaluable. Mm, I love that. I love that community as currency as well. That's so true. I was like mm-hmm. journaling the other night on like what a rich life is because I feel like my definition of that's changed so much over the last couple of years. And like to me, so much of it was, oh, like I get to see my friends, like I'm close by, I get to read a book, like I get to have like just relaxed evenings with no pressure and all the rest of it. Like it's these simple things and community is such a, such a huge part of that. And you both mentioned then about um, entrepreneurship and motherhood. How, how have you, okay, I'm just gonna say it. How the fuck do both of you so fucking successful and mums, because like you work two days a week and just like fucking smash life, like literally. And you, are lit- I mean, Jesus, like you're doing everything and you watch reality TV. I literally text Natalie the other night. I was like, can I have your schedule of how you're managing to find time to watch TV? I was like, how, how so both of you, how the fuck are you doing this? Please tell me, I need to know. I don't, th- so, okay. I restructured everything Mm. when I became a mom and I've been really open about it. You know, the way that I was running my business was so completely unsustainable and I was ready to walk away from it all because ultimately it wasn't worth it to me. Mm. I'm super, super clear that yes, I'm ambitious. Yes, I have goals, but motherhood is is my priority in this season. It's my priority in this decade, my, my entire, like that is what I'm devoted to. And knowing that's my priority, I have structured everything around that. And I made the decision that I really truly believe I get to have it all. Mm. And I often don't get to have it all at the same time, but what never changes is my commitment to my baby and my husband. That never, never changes. And then, you know, I will be seasoning through uh, being in, in work seasons, being in very extrovert seasons. I will season through many other different areas of life but I know exactly where my priorities are and know what I'm never willing to negotiate on and I think that's really important Mm. because if you say that everything is important all the time that's where the overwhelm comes from because you tell yourself you should be doing one thing when you're doing another or you're getting down on yourself for like not replying to the 50 texts that you've got or not saying yes to this partnership not saying you'll get so down on yourself for that but if you come back to I'm honoring my priorities for this season right now all of that feels a lot less charged. And I think that part's really important. And especially for those of us that before we became mothers, we would say yes to everything. Or we've probably all experienced that. And it's yeah. it's one of the things I don't think you can carry into this season of life, especially, you know, early motherhood when your babies are at home. That person just was my choice. Yeah, I feel like motherhood is like the ultimate filter for your business of like, what is really a priority and what is no longer going to make the cut, (laughs) you know, and some things are going to be put onto the back burner for a little bit and that's okay. And I think everyone's, every mother, every entrepreneurial mother's version of having it all looks different and feels different. And in my experience, you know, it's just about like really trusting your instincts, you know, Um, in the postpartum period, I also, you know, experienced like, oh, this isn't going to work how it used to work Mm. I might have to burn this down and start from scratch because I have to redesign this in a way that works for the type of motherhood that I want to experience and I'm not willing to put my baby behind my business Mm. like this is not going to work so you have to like reimagine and redesign and um, I think there is a death that comes with your business when you enter into motherhood But what I want to speak to is the rebirth that (laughs) happens is phenomenal. Mm. And that I've experienced in all of us. Mm. Amen to that. I'm glad that you completed that sentence. (laughs) There is a death. The end. (laughs) The rebirth. The rebirth is great. The rebirth is fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. And I know you spoke a little bit then about like putting baby motherhood as priority And I'm kind of asking this as a loaded question, but like, do you think it's possible to be a fully ambitious woman, go after your own dreams, go after your own goals and be a fully present mom? Mm, It depends on how you define fully present. Mm. And it depends on how you define ambitious and going after your goals. Okay. I wanna say 
I would love to say yes. Mm -hmm. And when I think about me before kids, like fully going after my goals, went like every day on saying yes to everything that Natalie said. Yeah. Like, and that for me, that doesn't equate to me being able to be a fully present mom. And I want to mm. just say that that's my experience of this. Mm. Um, yeah, that's how I feel about it. I love that. How do you feel? I think similarly, I think it's it's going to look different mm. if that's the case. Same thing, I could not compare the way, my business is bigger now than before I had kids, but th I was doing it beforehand too. Mm. So my business is bigger now. I actually think a lot of the changes that I made last year uh, uh, allowed me to work a lot smarter and to find more creative solutions to get better at delegating. I think it really has pushed me forward in one way. Um, but I, yeah, I, I, I feel the same way because I know there's also so much that I'm not willing to say yes to mm -hmm. and so much that I'm not willing to do. Yeah. I think my business was always going to be on a growth trajectory and it's, it's actually grown a lot more even so much this year compared to last than I probably could have ever imagined, but I'm not actually working more to make it happen. I think it's been a combination of many, many jigsaw pieces that were put into place yeah. and hiring really great people. And, you know, I'm, I just don't have time to micromanage anymore. And I also, quite frankly, don't have time for people not doing their jobs anymore. Yeah. I had a lot more patience than I than I do now because if you're expecting me to pay you and do your job, I'm not going to do it. Whereas in the past, I probably would have, right? Like, oh, I should have worked a boss, babe. That's not like I just <laughs> In the past, I, I mean, I fired way too slow. My mm. expectations were lower. Mm -hmm. um, I would be willing to micromanage. I wasn't as willing to have the hard conversations. I think as a businesswoman, I've grown with experience that happens. But also knowing, you know, when I'm sitting at my desk, that time I'm taking away from being with my baby. Mm. And so I'm not going to skirt around a conversation. I'm not going to cover when someone's not doing a great job yeah so that's changed a lot and I actually think that was the unlock I needed to scale my business mm -hmm. we often think that it's like a marketing play or something and, and I think a lot of it was me and and me getting out of my own way to scale my business yeah but I work nowhere near the amount that I used to work before I had no Emmy and I have no plans to go back to doing that anytime mm -hmm. soon either I love that you share how your business has grown during this period as well because I remember when I got pregnant I had all these plans in my business, things I was gonna set up before we got pregnant and then we were pregnant. And um, I remember thinking like, oh my God, like I'm fucked basically. Like I've worked so hard to build this business. I was really scared of what, and it makes me laugh now kind of on reflection. I'm like, wow, you were really, whoa, there was a lot of prioritization there. But like, I was so scared of what it would do to my business. And I remember asking these other mums and being like, hey, I'm pregnant, I'm scared. I didn't plan to get pregnant right now. I have this grand plan to put in action that I've not actioned. And on top of that, I feel so fucking sick, I can't do anything. And I remember all these mums being like, don't worry babes, babies bring abundance. Mm -hmm. And I was literally like rocking. <laughs> Be like, babies bring abundance. <laughs> babies bring abundance. <laughs> While some things like thrived and kept going, like I had built a lot in my business luckily up until this point, but other parts did just fucking die. Mm -hmm. And at the time that felt horrible. Like I, you know, when they talk about surrender and it's like, loosen your grip. I was not loosening my grip, I was like clinging on. And then as soon as I did actually let go and like give into that death and be like, fuck it. Like if it's gonna die, it's gonna die. I get to go home, I go home, I work from home. I don't, I don't know where that came from. But like, <laughs> I get to change room and my husband and my baby are in there mm -hmm. and I see my friend and like, that's fulfillment. So like, it's okay if these things die. And I think it's only then that I actually experience that like rebirth and that regrowth that, that you're talking about. Yeah, everyone talks about the quantum leap, but people don't talk about the death that comes no. before the quantum leap. <laughs> no. And so I think when we have been through enough death and rebirth cycles mm. in our life, whether that's in love, whether that's in business, whether that's becoming a mother, we eventually learn to trust the death. And we're like, oh, I know where this is going. Yeah. Come on, death. <laughs> like, yeah. This is this. I know where this is leading me to. So yeah. like the sooner I surrender to it, the sooner I get the rebirth on the other side. Mm. But the more I resist it, the more I'm gonna stay in like this, oh, I don't wanna be in the death. I don't wanna be in the death. I don't wanna be in the void. I don't wanna, because I don't wanna be in the unknown. Mm. But when we actually like 
release that grip and actually surrender to the death with the absolute faith and trust that what's coming on the other side is going to be beyond our wildest dreams. I mean, look what you've created. Like, this is the rebirth, baby. Mm. Like, it was so worth it. And it's here. And it's like probably 10x what you could have imagined when you were in the death. And same yeah. for all of us. I would like to confirm as well, Mel was trying to tell me to surrender during this time. <laughs> I'm a Capricorn, it's difficult. We don't like, surrender easy. Yeah, I actually remember just before I gave birth, I had a coach, she was like, babe, I don't feel like you need a coach right now. And I was like, no, no, I do, I do, I do. If I just need to hire a coach and just do these things, it's all gonna be fine. She's like, okay, babe. And then afterwards I was like, why did I have that fucking coach? I didn't need a coach, I just needed to let go. So I appreciate your advice. I'm sorry I didn't always listen. I am now. Everyone else gets to, Fine. gets to benefit from this. <laughs> I would say my death was not pretty mm. and it lasted so long. Mm. Like my postpartum experience of my loss of identity and not sure, what I, not sure what I even want to do with my career, not knowing who I am, that was really hard. Mm. And even surrendering into it was really hard. Mm. It took so long to come out of. And I think it's really challenging when you don't, I didn't have the trust that something better was waiting for me on the other side because I didn't know anything different. Mm. So I will, I, I do, when I was able to surrender and like open my mind to it, it being better than I could have imagined, things shifted. But to even get myself into that point of being able to change my mind in that way was really challenging. Mm. Yeah, And I think hormones are part of that as well. Oh my like, God. Massively. Yeah, I know you've spoken about postpartum anxiety. Like we have all seen each other going through the postpartum hormones. Like, and I think it is hard sometimes to, it's almost like a filter through, through your, you're seeing everything through is this big fog of hormones. So like, I think it is hard to go, oh, actually there could be something I, really incredible on the other side. Like I remember the point where I turned around and I was like, I feel hopeful for the first time in a really long time. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. And like, it doesn't come for a while. For a while yeah. it's like, buckle up, <laughs> Yeah, you know? And you know, you supported me through when I was in that death period because for me what it looked like was what business I just want to be a stay-at-home <laughs> mom this motherhood is the best thing ever like wait I have to show up and do what I said I was gonna do in my business I just want to cuddle my baby like Sean you just take over now I'm good like I just want to be a stay-at-home mom and yeah. and it's like nine months postpartum mm. I start to regain like oh my god no I love my business like I love my work and actually there's this new iteration of my work that gets to come through me as a mother now and like that feels exciting for the first time instead of oh I have this commitment that I have to do but actually I just want to be with my baby instead and so for me that was what I went through and I don't you know it's not necessarily everyone's experience but like it's a very real experience that I never really heard people talk about and I was like mm. am I alone in this I feel really I feel like isolated in this is anyone else thinking this and like I felt afraid to talk about it online because it's like well I don't want to lose my clients I don't want them to think that I don't care care about them I don't want to be on this call just I do. So you know. <laughs> but like being a mother has changed me so much you yeah. know yeah. so and like Natalie said like every time you show up for a call it's like this is time that I could be with my baby mm -hmm. so it's like if I'm not feeling like 10 out of 10 lit up mm -hmm. then something needs to change and I think motherhood helps you get into such deep alignment in your business because if you're not in alignment it's not worth taking time away from your baby yeah 100 percent. it's you've got to feel so aligned by what you're doing the message the work the offers the way that you're working with people otherwise it's really not worth it you'd rather I'd rather be with my baby yeah I totally get that and I feel I'm sorry I can't you just said that <laughs> <What>? <laughs> when she said I don't want to be on this call <laughs> That's killing me. Can I mean, you imagine <laughs> showing up to her. You're taking time away from my baby, so can you keep your game across? I feel like that is every postpartum mother. In the I don't want to be here. <laughs> like if we could. <laughs> Sorry, I've been holding that in when you said that. I was like, that is every postpartum mother. <laughs> don't want to be here. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, there's honestly there's things that have like shown up in my calendar, and I'm like. Why did I say yes to this? Oh, God. Oh, my baby. <laughs> oh, my God. I love this. Oh, the honesty is Some things just set me boring. off. That was one of those things. <laughs> Bye. Oh, my God. So, with this in mind, now knowing, and this was actually a question that came up when I put the box on Instagram. I've got the giggles now. When I put the box on Instagram, um, this was a question that came up. Knowing what you know now, 
how would you, you how would you have prepared your business for motherhood? Hmm. Gosh, it's hard. I, I the logical part of me wants to say like I would have done more automations. I would have scaled more before I got pregnant. I would have ran more ads. I would have, but then. I feel like what's inevitable when you become a mother is you want to change things mm. and you evolve and what you're putting out there, what you have been putting out there gets to shift. So I think the biggest thing that I would say is get support. So like you need a team, like you need people that can hold the ship and steer the ship while you're on maternity leave and while you're navigating. I would say monthly recurring revenue for sure, which I know Natalie is really big on as well. Um, but I mean, I feel like it's gonna, it's gonna shift and change. And like the more we can just accept that the way that we enter, the way that we have our business before we enter motherhood is not gonna be how we are and how our business is on the other side anyway. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's this story of like, I just, I could have been more set up. I could have been more ready. I could have been more ready. And I feel like that goalpost always keeps moving mm -hmm. further and further and further out. And so um, I feel like anyone could say, I could have been more, way more set up because it's hard to prepare for something like motherhood because it just changes every single aspect of who you are. So I, I personally would say like the soon, like you can do all of that as much as you can, but at the end of the day, there has to be like a surrender, you know? Completely. I totally, yeah. I really feel on that point of, I think that was partially why I wasn't like planning to get because I was like I have this plan and I know what would have happened I would have got to the January and be like haven't enacted enough of the plan let's push it another six months let's push it another six months and like yeah. it would have constantly the goalposts would have kept changing and everything that I did in that time I burnt down anyway I ended up you changed so much so like all that and and I, I will caveat this with saying I'd set up my business in a way that had recurring revenue to tide me over for the next 12 months so like it, it wasn't like I just kind of through you know burned everything down and was like oh shit what do I do now so I am grateful to that past version and there is an, an element of like I was so scrambling trying to work out what my business looked like on the other side and I, I it, there was it was pointless <laughs> I remember this coming with CEO mama actually mm -hmm. like I know I ag I agree same thing on the recurring revenue the funnels all the things but mm -hmm so interesting because when you asked that question I felt like I'd never really sat to think about it and what I realized was I've just realized this I was so committed to motherhood not changing my ambition mm. I think that's what made my postpartum experience so so much more challenging because I was under the illusion I knew exactly who I was motherhood wasn't going to change anything you know I'd made all these commitments of when I was coming back and what I was going to do and all of that stuff and I was just so sure of myself. Mm -hmm. And then I went I, I went through the portal of motherhood and everything changed. And I went through this internal battle of, I can just pretend I'm the same person and show up as I always have. I can just pretend mm -hmm. or I can just be really real. And whatever unfolds from that is gonna unfold. Mm -hmm. And I tried one and it really didn't work. Mm -hmm. And that made everything so much harder. I just resisted, resisted, resisted. When I fully just admitted what was true for me, that's when it felt like the path opened up. Mm. But I just wish, yeah, we can talk about the funnels and the recurring revenue, but I wish I hadn't been so tied to the idea that I wasn't going to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That I was still going to be the same person as if it was a badge of honor mm. to be the same person, to be as ambitious, to be just as driven. Like that was a badge of honor. Mm. And I got on the other side of it and I thought, what kind of badge of honor is that? That's If it's not my truth, it's not a badge of honor. Mm. And that was just a really big wake up call for me. I love that. This has been a healing conversation for me as well because I realize that is part of it. Like, I I didn't want to be that person who spoke about motherhood on my Instagram all the time. I didn't want to like I was. <gasps> <laughs> and I was like a stab to stab to the heart. <laughs> like, no, but I I did. I I just I it, it wasn't that I didn't like it when other people did that. I was just like, this is me and this is who I am and I'm gonna stay this way. And now I mean, yeah, and I'm like, my feet's not gonna be of... just like 
baby albums. Yeah. And, and oh then I was just like, stri- I was just, my whole page became like mother. <laughs> I had people, I had followers announce their departure being like, <laughs> you, the whole you? thing has turned into motherhood and I'm not here for it. And Don't I was let like, the well, door hit you on the way up. Yeah. Like, Bye-bye. this is how it is around here. Sorry. Fuck you, <laughs> Sheila. I didn't want to be here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I feel as though motherhood is the deepest metamorphosis that we can go through and like to just let it have its way with us is the most beautiful thing we can do because like like what else are we gonna do do you know what I mean like what else are we here for like this is literally like we're creating life we're birthing life into the world and we're trying to not let it affect us <laughs> sorry what <laughs> now that you say it though it makes sense true but honestly like, true. that didn't if you just said that to me before it happened to me I would have said she doesn't get me she doesn't know how cle- how true of an identity I have. Yeah. She doesn't understand. Mm. Now I'm like, well, that's a lot of truth. But I just did. I wouldn't have gotten it. Yeah. See how I struggled in pregnancy when she was giving me all this I beautiful see wisdom. And I was there like, okay, yeah, that's good for you. <laughs> I was like, but I, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Well, you were right. It's just Holy so right. interesting. I mean, yeah. We and all then, have different yeah. experiences. With everything though, isn't it so interesting when you hear the advice on the other side of it? You're like, oh yeah, I get that. But like without whatever transformation you're going through, unless you've really experienced it, you just can't, you don't get it. Yeah. On, with everything, not just motherhood. It's like everything's like yeah. that. I was joking about this to someone the other day. Jake's actually in the audience. So sorry, Jake. But, um... I, I was saying this, we were talking about relationships and I was saying one big thing I don't do in my relationship is coach my husband. And I've tried it before and I was like, it used to wind me up because I would tell him something and he would completely ignore it. And then six months later, he'd be like, oh, I just heard this thing. And I'm like, oh. are you fucking kidding me? I told you it was six months. Like, we could have saved six months here. Like I'm like the efficiency as well. But like, I, I feel like it is that thing. It's that you, you can't always hear it until you, I love you, Jake, I'm sorry, but it's true. Um, yeah. But you can't hear it until you're on the other side and you're or like- until you're actually ready to hear it. Mm. Yeah. And let, yeah. until you're at, until it's ready to actually land, yeah. Because there's some stuff that I've like heard years ago, and then I hear it now, and I'm like, yes, it lands for the first time properly, and I just wasn't ready to hear it back then. Yeah, I, I well. mean, I even feel like that with you. With I mean, so many things like you just have a lot of wise advice, but like even relationship stuff. Sometimes when you give me relationship advice, I'm like, no, <laughs> no, thank you. And then a month later, I'm like. You know, she was right about that. <laughs> but you know, when you're so in, you're like, I don't want that to be right, so it's not right. And then it lands. I'm like, she, if I just listened to her again, it would be more efficient. It would have been faster. <laughs> I, do you know, when you're saying this, there's one that stands out to me before. And I remember you'd sent like a voice note. I don't know if it was for me, it was for Natalie or someone else, but you'd Probably sent, one of us. It was one of us, but you sent us a voice, a really wise voice note. And it was like, when you're in, when you're in confrontation, try and soften. Oh, you that's know? it. That always Try gets me. And soften. <laughs> always. And whenever I'm two Capricorn best friends. <laughs> like, what do you mean? <laughs> soften. He's right. Really... <laughs> and whenever I'm so angry now, I'm like shaking. I'm like, soften. <laughs> soften. <laughs> I can't do it. I need to go scream in a pillow for a while. Oh but God. then, but when, but when I can soften, <laughs> it's the best thing ever. It always works, it but it's always so works. hard to do. Yeah. 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 How the fuck do we soften? Please actually explain this. Because this, this is tricky. I typically think just entering into any confrontation or conflict or any area of tension, whether it is with a partner or whether it is with a friend or whether it is with a team member, you know, if we can just let our guard down and speak from our heart and just like allow our, like it's usually like our shoulders and our face, like our jaw and just allow literally our body to soften as we go in, Mm. we're going to get to a resolution way faster when we go in with like tense energy and like like so committed to being right Mm -hmm. and so committed to our defensiveness and our side of the street and our argument you're going to meet someone who's going to mirror that same thing Mm -hmm. but when you come in with softness and when you come in with an open heart and like dropping into the heart speaking from true desire from true vulnerability from true softness this is how I feel this is how this has made me feel and this is the story that I'm telling myself about this this is what I desire. This is my intention for this. Mm. We're going to be mirrored that same thing back to us. S- someone's not going to mirror like with the, with their hardness. You know, they're going to be like, okay, she's coming into her softness. I'm going to come into my softness. We can meet each other heart to heart mm. instead of wall and wall, mm. you know? So I think this is really helpful in relationships, just period, like any relationships. And um, 
everything is always a practice and like this is always easier said than done in the beginning until we literally train it into our bodies of like Mm -hmm. when we recognize I'm actually going to get where I want to get faster which is to connection and resolution. She knows how not to speak to, to her. Being right. <laughs> right. It's about, it is a bit of efficiency, right? It's about where do I want to get to? I want to come, I want to come into connection with this person. I want to make up. I want us to be in connection. And when we say that to our partner, I really want to connect. I, this is my intention. I really want to want us to come back together. This is how I feel from that softness. Um, we're just going to get there faster, you know? And it's like, do we want to stay mad at each other? Do we want to prove that we're right? Do we want a point score or do we want to be in connection? Mm. We want to be in connection. We just don't want to admit that to ourselves in the moment because we're so committed to our cause, Yeah, you know? So my whole no, body. Yeah. I mean, that. it's right. It's not easy. To... No. It's always yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I always think like, do I want to be right or do I want to be connected? Mm. Like, do I want to choose being right or do I want to choose love? Mm. And, you know, sometimes when we are setting our partner up to lose, it's actually lose-lose, you know? We get to set our partner up to win. We get to set our friends up to win. And we do that by like listening and coming into our hearts. I love this. I feel like such a bitch now for for the arguments that I have when I'm shaking in the corner. (laughs) I mean, yeah, it's... It's beautiful. Yeah, My whole body's off and listening to that as well. (laughs) I feel like this has come through a little bit already and I, I want to talk to this. We are all incredibly good friends and we're all incredibly different. And I feel like we have different approaches to life, to business, to motherhood. And I'd love to just like riff on that and hear both of your opinions on this and like your perspectives on this because I definitely think, I'll speak for myself, like growing up, you thought the friends were like the people who were the same. And there was a lot of like almost like connection built on the sameness. And actually some of the most beautiful friendships in my life isn't built on sameness. It's built on contrast and having differing opinions. And I think luckily not speaking for myself here, I encounter a lot of people in the same way I'm being judged for this. I'm being judged by this for my friends, for my family, even partners sometimes. And it's difficult. How, how do you think you cultivate and foster this environment of like having friendships and loving that everyone's different and also not bringing judgment into into these differing opinions I think the longer that you are friends with someone the more you get to see all their different multifaceted aspects Mm -hmm. and that creates just just like more of a like just you get to see their full humanity and there's going to be parts that like really align with your truth and there's going to be parts that like don't but like when you're judging someone you're not able to like fully love them at the Mm -hmm. same time and so I think as you get older you start to just think oh yeah that's that that's that thing about that person but I love them it doesn't stop me from loving that person it just makes me even love them more because it's like this person really knows who they are in the world and I I really value that in a person. Mm, I love yeah. That. What about you? I think too, a level having a level of confidence in yourself mm. makes a big difference. Cause I often think if you're judging something in someone else, there's part of you that feels insecure about it. Mm. Like if you're judging someone else's motherhood, I think that probably lends itself to saying you might be insecure about the way you're mothering. Mm. What is it about that that's triggering for you? Because if you felt super confident in the way you were doing it, you would trust, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing because I trust my instincts. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, of course, there's outliers in this case, but generally, you know, you are friends with someone, you know that they're doing what's best in their instincts. And I think having that confidence in yourself lends itself to having confidence in others and you don't have that level of judgment. Mm. I think that's a really nice way to be able to have friendships of and I would speak for our friendship, I feel like we all are so confident in ourselves and we all truly deeply care about each other's individual happiness that it's never, we never feel like we're scared to admit something, even though we all do things so differently. Yes, we're we're the same in some ways, but even in our motherhood, so much of what we do is so different and we have different beliefs even about motherhood. And I think, I think that's great. I think that level of confidence, but I also think it's so nice to be, in community like that because it it I I learn from it Mm -hmm. and it introduces me to ways of thinking that I might not have thought before and it introduces me to think about 
oh, interesting, they do it that way. Is that something I want to try on? Mm. And sometimes it's a no, but sometimes it's a yes. And I'll try it on and I like it. Mm. And that feels like I'm expanding and growing because I'm around people that are different. Mm. And that's really nice. I agree. I agree with that. Like when you're around people who think slightly different, it's like like a really good learning opportunity. Otherwise you're just in an echo chamber. Mm -hmm. And I actually for this reason, like I make a point of like listening to podcasts and people who don't share the same beliefs as me, Mm. like with things like just things in our culture and politically. And I'm like, I want to understand this, this viewpoint because Mm. it's not my natural go-to viewpoint, but I want to really understand the way that this person thinks about the world. Cause I think it's going to expand my awareness and help me be able to connect with more people and understand because you know we're all we're all we're all different but we're all the same you know and if we sit down heart to heart like I said like with Mm. anyone with different beliefs we'd find that we all want the same thing we all want love we all want connection we all we just have different ways of getting there yeah you know and especially with motherhood like so many we've spoken about our motherhood experiences and so much of our motherhood journeys are influenced by our own mothers Mm. and what we experienced whether that was positive and we really were inspired by that or whether it was limiting and negative and we don't want to repeat that and I think that's that's a really important unique aspect of every mother's journey Mm. and I really agree with both of you there about the kind of like I think it's healthy I think I love that practice of like listening to other opinions and I kind of want to bring that in a little bit more but I think it's healthy because I think when you're you've all got the same opinion it's like like you rile each other up and then it creates almost like a divisiveness where you become so riled up and so convinced that the way that you're doing things is the right way of doing it. And then it's almost like this confrontation if anyone dares disagree with you. I think that would be a cult, actually. <laughs> I think that would be more of a cult. I yeah. think we're good for not doing that. Yeah. Because then I think it would be maybe a little dangerous. Confirmed, yeah. not a cult. Oh, Confirmed, not a cult. Okay, Great. we tick that box. Great. You mentioned then actually about how your mother your own experiences of your mother impacts the way that you mother. For both of you, what positive, what negative, like how has your experience with your own mothers impacted the way that you mother? Well, for me, um, what I witnessed in my mom was a woman who was entrepreneurial, creative, and designed her businesses around her babies. Mm -hmm. So she created different businesses that she did from home and they were small businesses um but she literally made them work so that she could be home with us and this was like in the 90s so this was before the internet before you know funnels and systems and ads she wasn't on social media or anything like that um but she non-social media business i know i know she actually had wait for it a membership what for moms and babies and God. she would send out like worksheets and packets in the mail for moms to do with their babies at home no this was oh her God, business that was amazing. yeah and I got to like help her create all the activity packs and like uh-huh. my dad was an entrepreneur as well he was a mm-hmm. psychologist so I got I feel like I got a lot from both of them yeah but my mom like I actually got to help her do the packets and like getting to be involved in my mom's business and feel like I was doing my bit and like seeing her do it all from home was so inspiring to me. And she was always with us. She was always around. So I never felt like I was missing out on my mom because of her work. And that is something that's always stuck with me. Mm. Like I want to have an amazing business and feel like I'm living my purpose and changing changing women's lives. Mm. But I never want my baby to feel like, mom's doing that and she's never here Mm. you know um so that that was a really positive influence on me and when I entered into the space of entrepreneurship I feel as though having that as a role model and she also pivoted a lot in her businesses so she did that for a bit then she did like summer schools for a bit like Mm. in our school she would like do the summer schools for kids in the school um and then she did like beauty therapy and aromatherapy and herbalism and I got to see that you can pivot and you can reinvent yourself and you can shift with your passion. And that that has really influenced me because I'm a big fan of a pivot and a rebirth. And I believe that we are many, many things. We don't have to just be one thing. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's been a really, a really positive influence on the way that I have entered into motherhood and entrepreneurship. 
I lo- yeah. I didn't know that about you either with like the packets. That was cool to find out like, and your mum's such a legend as well. Yeah. Although I was giggling because your mum was setting up the summer camps. My mum couldn't work out what the term dates were. Like my <laughs> mum was the one taking me like back to school a day early and a day late. So like, it was just, <laughs> it was a different experience. <laughs> um, Nasi, how about you? It's different experience. My mum was a single mum. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm one of eight and I really remember you know, she struggled to put food on the table some weeks, you know, struggled to pay for heat in the house. Like we really didn't have a lot of the basics growing up. Um, And I remember her strength throughout it all, like has definitely been something that I've taken from her, which I love. And getting to witness that made me really want to be independent and have my independence and also have freedom to choose how I wanted to live my life. Mm. You know, seeing what she went through it gave me a lot of empathy for what a lot of people go through because it wasn't a case of she could have set her own business up and scaled and all the things that we often talk about you know she was really struggling to put food on the table you you are in pure survival when you're in that space Mm. and so I just learned a lot about not wanting to be in that place Mm. having an empathy for what that is what that looks like and wanting to create something very very different for myself Mm. so the way that I've structured really my entire life, I think has come from a lot of what I saw. Mm. You know, I make some financial decisions and I talk about this openly of always wanting to be in a place of freedom. You know, I've never wanted to be highly leveraged. You know, I do silly things like buy my house in cash and like things like that, that to other people might be like this crazy decision. And oh, you could, if you leverage, this happens and you make more money this way and it's a silly financial decision. To me, that's peace. And you can't put a price on peace. (laughs) And, and I think about that kind of stuff, like what feels peaceful to my nervous system is knowing that I'll never have to go into that place of security. Mm. I'm not having that. Um, and so I've made a lot of decisions that um, I don't feel like I'm making from a place of trauma, but actually from a place of this is what feels really good for me. And I want to create security so that I get to choose. My mum was home with us a lot, um, but that really wasn't necessarily a choice mm. because childcare was way more expensive than what you would have got paid. And I love that she was home with us, but I would also like to have the choice. I like to have the choice to go to work. So um, that was just amazing to see that. And I've definitely gained a lot of strength from it and just a a level of empathy for what a lot of people go through because this is a lot more common than we like to think Mm. I exist in a bubble now and I don't see a lot of people like that Mm. um so I like to get involved in in helping people in that situation because it is a lot more common than we think 100 percent. and do you think that empathy is part of what's like fired you up to support so many women to create freedom yeah I I really, really deeply want to help women create freedom and independence Mm. so that they can make decisions for themselves and that they don't have to stay in perhaps abusive or toxic relationships. So they don't have to stay in jobs that feel like it's, you know, uh, they can't even afford childcare because the job's not paying them enough. I truly want to help women create freedom. And, you know, on the other side of it, I love working with women that are crushing it, seven figures. And how do we scale beyond that? Because all of that has a big impact. And um, I'm so lucky that the women I work with all care about impacting the world. And I, yeah, I just, it just has instilled in me this sense of, I, you know, when you think about, would you go back and relive it? I don't know, Mm. but I'm so grateful for everything that it gave me, the level of strength that I have because of it has been incredible and I'm so grateful for the way that my mum showed up throughout that and just who she is is yeah very very grateful I love that what Uh, about you this is such a a good question Alex so for me I think something my mum has definitely inspired me is kindness my mum is the most kind generous person ever like she will she will go above and be she literally texted me the other day she was like I want to bring some things over for the girls kids and like she she's just like so caring and so loving and I think that's really inspired me to like fully show up in my friendships and my relationships in that way like if I could be a tenth as kind as my mom like I feel like I'm winning in life like she truly is and I don't think it was always easy for her when I was growing up um my mom was stay at home. She had she had had some businesses. She kind of slowly wound them up. It was property as um, as I was growing up, and I think she struggled with it. I think I think she struggled 
I think she had a lot of dreams, a lot of goals, a lot of ambitions. She didn't necessarily have the confidence maybe to to go after them. And um, yeah, I, th I think it's impacted me in the way that, I just feel quite emotional answering this. Um, I really wanna fulfill my dreams and I, and I wanna do that. And it's it, the thing that makes me emotional is every time I do something, my mum's so proud of me. Mm. And she is very much like, wow, you show me what's possible. And like, wow, you've done this. And she'll like bring her business ideas to me and stuff like this. And and in many ways, I mean, she was it's very successful, but she had her properties and that was incredible. But I definitely just saw both sides of it. And I think it feels very healing in many ways to get to be in that position now of like, we can do these things. Like you can have an idea, but you can also, you can make it manifest. You can make it real. Um, so yeah, yeah. God bless our moms. Incredible women. Incredible and I totally see the that. Yeah. I see that too, because when we think about our kids, I mean, you just want them to be so happy. And, and I know for me, like when mine are older, I'm going to totally be living vicariously through them. And my hope is that I just set them up with enough confidence mm -hmm. to be able to go out there and do the things they want to do. And I really think that comes from us mirroring that to them. If you can mm. do that and, and putting that confidence in them. Cause I'm sure, I'm sure that's all you want when you get, when you see your kids grow up, you're like, I just want them to be happy and do what makes them happy. So, yeah, I mean, I definitely thought it was going to be the hardest part of motherhood. I was like, you have to watch them make their decisions and you might think it's a shit decision, but you have to back them. And I was like, I'm going to find that really hard. And okay, like he's he's like nearly one, so I won't speak to you soon. But um, I do feel like already I'm like, God, I love you so much. And I know that loving you so much means supporting you in your decisions, not what I think you should do or how I think you should be. So like, I can definitely see how that's going to I'm going to say that it's going to test I wonder if there's mums of like yeah. 30 year olds yeah, listening yeah. being like Easier yeah that's what done. you think yeah. honey yeah. Yeah. Rachel's living at home at 30 jobless <laughs> yeah <laughs> I love you honey you got this <laughs> it's gonna be great totally so we're gonna wrap this part up we're gonna be back for part two which is gonna be the wind down